Hey guys, I'm Daggett. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be covering a highly requested topic. And this is the topic of koi fish. Now, in particular, we're not just covering koi fish. I'm going to be showing you guys how to draw scales that wrap around the body and follow the curvature of the body of the koi fish. So many people have asked me, how do I draw scales that wrap around the body of a dragon, a snake, or a koi fish, etc.? So in today's video, I'm going to break down at least my method on how to draw the scales that wrap around the shape and curvature of the body to give it a fairly realistic look. And you can use this as a template for how to draw koi fish of any style. So if you want to draw something realistic, near traditional or new school, you can use this as a really nice base template for that and just build upon it with your own style. So without further ado, guys, let's get to today's video. Let's jump straight into it. Grab your drawing supplies. Let's head over to the table and to the overhead. Okay, guys, we're back at the table. And like I said, today we're going to be covering the Japanese koi fish. I'm going to be showing you guys something that's going to be a little bit of a mix of traditional and near traditional sort of style. Um, this is just because there are so many different styles and ways to apply textures and, uh, you know, design elements and details to your koi fish if you want to make it look traditional or if you want to make it look near traditional or realistic sort of thing. Um, so it's easier for me to show you sort of a mix uh, and just the base sort of template for how to do this. This will be different to my other videos in the sense that we're not going to be lining this whole thing and shading and coloring this whole thing because it is a large design and there is a lot to go through. But I'm just going to start with today and show you how to lay out the base elements and do the scales. And then in a future video, we can cover shading, coloring and lining uh, the koi fish. So this is an example of the koi that we'll be drawing, or at least a result of the sketch that we'll be doing. So we'll be doing something along those lines. And I'm basically just using an A3 sketch pad today. It's just a cheap, um, I think it's a student brand sketch pad. The other difference in today's video is I'll be using a regular lead pencil. And this is just to get a thicker line on the page because it's an A3 page and I want you guys to be able to see everything as I do it, I'm gonna keep the camera up mostly at this uh, shot until the details come in later on. And so using a thicker lead just to lay down a bit of a heavier framework for you guys to see. But feel free to use a mechanical pencil when you follow along and feel free to lay down your lines really lightly if you do intend on inking straight over the top of them. So we're gonna start off with the shape of the body and the shape of the head. And it's important to lay all of these shapes out in the beginning. So our head's gonna be down here and the body's gonna curve up that way, like it did in the other design. To draw our head shape in, we're going to basically draw a little box. And the box will be this sort of shape. That will be the top of this box. So essentially we have a longer line here and they taper down to this shorter edge here. The same is true for the back. So we come down like this and then we taper forward and we join the front like this. So we create a little box shape. We're gonna add in a center line to this. So just drawing a line directly down the center and then coming up the side of the head or the side of the box and across the top. And we do that roughly at the center mark for the sides as well. This will give us placement for our eye. So directly on that line that we just, just drew, you can draw a circular or an oval sort of shape that'll give you a place for the eye. At the very front of this box, we're going to come off the front edge of it uh, if you can see what this does is it gives us different planes of perspective. So this is the top of the koi fish head. This becomes the side of the head and this is the front of where the mouth will be. So it actually gives you a different plane of view as opposed to just drawing like a circular shape for the head. So in this front area of the box, we're going to be drawing in the mouth shape. And for the time being, we're pretty much going to draw in almost like a diamond shape or a really wide diamond shape. And that just gives us placement for our mouth. And your center line can continue down 
and to the front of that mouth. So it comes down the front of the box a little bit and then out towards the front of that mouth. In terms of drawing in the body shape, we're going to follow the shape of from the head up this way and the body will take a turn. So we're gonna come up this way. And there's a bit of a curvature to it. It's not a straight line because the koi fish, it's not fl completely flat. It has a spine to it. So we come up. When you reach this sort of point, you're gonna turn back this way and then come back that way to flick off for where the tail will end up to join up the body so that you have a bit of a better shape and so you get an idea of how it's going to look if you need to erase something. Coming from the bottom of our box here, we can just come with a curved line that joins into that spinal line that we did. Like this. And from the other side, we're going to do a curved line that comes to about here. And then a curved line that parallels this line like this so we're just following that same shape but with a bend here from this point here roughly you're going to draw in a curve and this will be the cutoff for where your tail is and then you can just draw in the lines for your tail so we can bring one line down like this bring this curve right up around and curve that in as well. And that gives you a shape for your nice big tail. In terms of drawing in the dorsal fin, we'll probably come back about uh, a quarter of the way on the body, about this point, and bring a line that comes like forward or a curved line that comes towards the right here. Like this. There's a lot of different ways to do this dorsal fin as well. This is just the way we're doing it in today's video. And for the sake of this, we'll just bring it back to the spine and around and back like that. One thing you can do is bring this curve out a little bit more and you actually get a little bit more flow in your spine uh, or in your dorsal fin. So to show you that, you bring that line further out than the body and then back in and then this spinal line you actually join up to there now it's really easy to see that if you erase these lines inside the, the dorsal fin it's really easy to see how that's constructed and how that follows the shape of the body it has a flow to it and the fin doesn't look stagnant like it's not just a stuck onto the back of the fish it's actually got a little bit of shape and a bit of flow to it in terms of drawing in the fins we're going to come back probably uh, i don't know this far from the head i'm not sure you know what measurement that is let's say an inch and a half from where our head is and we're going to draw in our main fins so drawing in little circles and then follow that shape around the body. Make sure you're using a curved line to follow that shape around the body and just draw yourself a little indication of where that fin will be. And from that position, you're basically gonna come out back down and in. So if you think of it as a triangle, we've got one, two, three lines. You're just curving this long line and then bringing that line back. So it's almost like a stretched out tr curved triangle shape. Same goes for the other side. The only thing is you'll see a little bit less of the fin on the other side. If you notice here, the fin is actually in line with the bottom of the body. So if we line the top of the head up with the body here, the fin is actually attached closer to the bottom of the body, which means on this side of the fish, the fin's not gonna be sticking out from the top of the fish. It's also gonna be connected to, you know, lower on the body, in which case you see a little bit less of the fin. To drawing the back fin, uh, well, there's two of them, but usually one of them is visible. 
we're going to come in just behind where we drew our dorsal fin, draw in a little circle, and put in just a little indication of our fin shape like this. So it's just a curved line out, and it, it's basically the same shape as this, but a lot smaller, and you can do it a little bit smoother as well. It has a little bit less expression to it. It sort of just hangs out back there. Okay, so that gives you a really, really solid foundation for your koi fish. The body shape is right. The shape of the head has planes, so it's not just a really flat looking image. And there's some nice curvature to the body, making it really easy to uh, put in some nice background elements and that sort of thing. We're gonna go ahead and draw in the scales. Now in terms of doing this, you can just continue on with your lead pencil that you were using for the rest of the sketch. But to make things a little bit easier for you, I'm gonna be using two different colored pencils, a red and a blue. And I actually think this is a valuable way to practice doing the scales. This is how I did them in the beginning. And this creates a really easy thing to follow, right? Because you're not trying to juggle all these different tiny elements and details all in the same color. But using a few different colored pencils can really help you get this pattern down. So the way that it works essentially is we're going to draw rings around the body. And the rings around, that come around the body need to follow the contours of the shape. So with the spine being at the top, these rings are essentially going to start from the bottom of the body, come up to the spine, and then go back down towards the front and bottom of the body, like this. They start a little bit closer together, and as they get to the spine, they're going to widen a little bit. So this gap here is a little bit smaller than the gap at the spine. And you're basically going to continue that pattern all the way down the body. Just completely disregard the dorsal fin. Don't worry about it for now. Just continue our pattern down the body. Once you've drawn all of your blue lines in, we're going to take a red pencil and this again is just for clarity's sake you, you would obviously just do this in whatever uh, color or medium that you feel comfortable and we're going to follow the line of the spine for our first uh, row here so starting at the head we're going to do a line that's fairly close to our spine here probably a centimeter or so and it's going to very closely follow the shape of the spine around the body and about the same width on the other side of the spine, just coming around. And that's gonna continue through and up the back of the spine here. Now we're gonna use, we're gonna, in our minds, we're gonna delete that line from the spine and we're gonna use just the two red lines as reference to create our next uh, sort of contour line. It's gonna be about the same width as those two red lines and it's gonna follow the shape and wrap around the body like that. Coming down from there again, in the same, roughly the same width, we can come around the body. And then the bottom of the body, of course, will link into that also. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing, same width, coming around the body. Obviously the bottom of the body and we fit another one, another row uh, at the back here, which is like this line here is the same line at, that we see at the top of the fish here. Okay, so in terms of actually drawing in our scales, this is just the, you know, laying the foundations for them. In terms of drawing them in, we're gonna do a dot at the center of each box. Each and every single box that we've drawn, there's gonna be a dot in the center of it. So starting on your spine, you can draw a dot at the center of all of the boxes. You can skip all of the ones in the dorsal fin, it's not important. And just draw these little dots in for the center of the box. And you go to your next row and you do the exact same thing. You go to the next row and you continue to do the exact same thing, drawing a dot in the center of each of these boxes. 
Okay, so once you've drawn all of the dots in, your foundation work is finally finished and you can start actually drawing scales. How exciting is that? Um, I am gonna zoom in so that you can see uh, a couple of the scale patterns and then I'll, I'll zoom back out. Okay, so essentially what we're doing to draw in the actual scales themselves is we're gonna use the red lines and the black dots that we just drew in as reference. All of the blue lines were there for is to give us reference for where to put the black dots. So now we don't really focus on the blue lines at all. We're primarily focused on the red lines and the black dots. More specifically, where the red line intersects with the blue line. So I guess we do reference them a little bit, but it's more like corners of the box is what we're focusing on. So we're going to start in this corner here and essentially come up to our dot with a curved line. And then from that dot back down to the corner with a curved line. And we're going to come up to the center again and back down to the corner. Up to the center again and back down to the corner. And then in terms of the ones that are hidden behind the dorsal fin, we have a center point. So we just come from the corner to the center, from the corner to the center. And we basically can continue that way. And that actually cuts out a little bit of the work, which is nice as well. Um, the, fin, the, uh, the row next to it, you're going to do the same thing. You're actually going to go ahead and do this along the entire body. For every single box that is on the body, you're going to draw in a scale, which is a curved line from the corner of that box to the center, and then back down to the opposite corner. Or not to the opposite corner, to the adjacent corner. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish this now, but I'll show you uh, how to link these up first. So to link the scales up now, we're going to uh, completely reverse or basically do the opposite of that process. So instead of linking from corner to center to corner, we're now going to link from center to corner and down to center. And we're going to go up the body and basically link all of those uh, center points to a corner and then back to another center point. And we'll continue to do that again for every single scale that's on the body until it's completely covered and you've basically done the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we can get into details on drawing the head and the, and the fins. So I finished off all the scales using the method that I was showing you and as you can see we have a really nice set of scales. I don't know about you guys but this is probably my preferred way of doing scales. Even if I'm doing traditional work I still like to do these style of scales which can be considered more near traditional but at the end of the day it, in my opinion it makes the artwork look better. Uh, something I never liked about a lot of traditional designs is the way that the scales stop at an edge. So basically when the scales meet this edge here or the belly edge, they would just abruptly uh, cut off. So with, with a lot of designs that I've seen, uh, the, the scales will just cut off at that edge. They don't wrap around the body. With this particular method, the scales wrap the body all the way down to the tail and it's fairly consistent and uniform and they actually have flow to them uh, you know in themselves like the scale shapes actually have flow in them uh, which I really like in making the design look a little bit nicer okay so on to doing a little bit of the details here I'm gonna start by showing you how to do one of the fins and then you're basically gonna repeat that for all of the fin shapes on this body so but for both of the front fins the dorsal fin and our small fin here they're basically gonna be the exact same thing and even the tail is pretty much the same thing Basically what we're doing is where we drew that circle, we're going to go to the other side of it and taper a line down to the tip of our fin here. Just like that. From that sort of center point where that circle is again, we're going to bring out another line and double up on that, tapering to a tip as well or to a point. Same thing coming towards the back. Obviously these are getting smaller because they're following the shape of our fin. And in this case, we'll just do those three main spines. And to link the fins up, we're pretty much gonna do little curves like this that join those sections or those segments. 
and they just want to stay within the realm of our initial uh, sketch shape that we did. And this last one will wrap around and back into the scale like that. So it's very similar, I guess, to doing peony petals. We're just doing like little bumps, little curved lines that join into each other and wrap around to the back to complete the fin. And then from the outside going back towards the main point of our fin, we can do some little whippy lines like this that are just going to give it a little bit more texture and make the fins look a little bit prettier. So you're basically going to go ahead and do that for all the other fins. Okay, so in terms of doing the dorsal fin, you're going to do the same like peaks that we did, the little spikes that we did, but they're not going to come from one center point. So you're not going to do a circle here and then do all of them coming from there. You're just going to space them out you know, as equally as you can. And I like to do them, you know, probably two, two to three scales apart. And just draw them in like that. And another couple before the end of the fin there. And then again, you link them up just using our little curved lines to add a bit of texture to the top of our fin. Like that and then you draw in your little veins or texture details onto the fin. Alrighty, so in terms of doing the tail, we're going to use the same detail we did for these little spines along both outer edges of the tail. So basically just coming straight off the back of our fish, you can bring a line up and taper it, uh, do, a, do a parallel line to that that tapers down to the tip. So it starts off at the same thickness and tapers down and do the same thing on the other side. This gives our tail a little bit of structure and helps link it into the body a little bit better. And then to draw in the actual tail shape, we're gonna do our little curved lines down to the center on both sides and they're gonna overlap roughly in the center as well. Like this. And from the other side, like that. Really simple, guys. Not much to it. And then drawing those little veins, following the shape of our tail back towards our fish. At the point where the tail overlaps as well, I like to put a little loop in. So where the front part of the tail comes... Sorry, the... Um, where it overlaps, the piece that overlaps at the front is going to come down, loop behind itself, and continue out. So there is actually a join in the tail, and that little loop will indicate where it, where it joins, but there's an overlap. So the two parts of the tail slightly overlap each other. Okay, guys, we're nearly there. Like I said, this is a pretty big drawing, and there is a lot of details to it, but we're nearly there already. So we're going to get into how to design the head, keep the head simple. And like I've spoke about before when doing composition, if the background elements or other elements in the design are complex, keep the parts simple that you want to stand out or vice versa. So in this case, the body of the fish is super complicated. Like there are scales and fins and then veins within those fins. It's complex. So keep that head simple and it'll pop out of your design. Alrighty guys, we're on to drawing the head. So I've come in a little bit here so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And we're basically going to start designing the head using those contour shapes to actually give us shape to what we're doing. So to start with, we're going to do our eye. So we've already drawn in a shape for our eye, which is perfect. Just behind it, I'm going to come in with a curved line that sort of mirrors our curve at the back of the eye there. And it's just going to come around to the front of the eye. And then you can, if you want to add some sort of detail, you can put a little fold in behind that as well. And off the back of the eye, we're going to do a little lip, basically. So it's just like a little um, double up on that line, and it joins back into that oval. Inside the eye, we can draw in a pupil. Now, there's lots of different ways to do it. Some people will draw the full, like, an iris and a pupil, and they'll do the iris a different color. 
Some people do a really tiny little black pupil. In this case, we'll do a circle like this. Maybe put a little highlight in and we'll just shade that black. So we'll keep the eye nice and simple for this one, but there's so many different ways to do it. So, you know, you can play around with that and, you know, get an idea of how you want to draw um, those little details in. Coming in from just behind the eye, we're going to draw in some curved lines that come up and a little bit onto the top sort of portion of our head. And this wraps around the bottom as well. And this sort of encompasses the eye area. And then just behind that, we're going to draw in like part of the gills, I guess, of the fish. So just behind this, we can come out and do another row of these curved lines. Don't stress about your scales. Go straight over the top of them. They're just there for guide. And then if you want to make things simpler, just erase whatever's behind that area so you can see what you're doing. And you're going to draw little veins in on that as well. And these ones in particular, I like to keep close together. And it adds a little bit of detail to the back of the head here that's really nice. We're going to draw in a spot for our whiskers. And in this case, I think we're going to do really little whiskers. But it really depends. Like, sometimes Koya are drawn with really over-exaggerated whiskers, kind of like dragon whiskers. Um... But in this case, we're going to do maybe something slightly more realistic. And just at the front of the head here, drawing a little circle. And a little whisker like this. Okay. And off the, off the other side, you can roughly gauge where that's going to be. And do the same thing. Now, like I said, the, the whiskers, sometimes they're over-exaggerated. They're more like catfish catfish whiskers they're really really long and thin um and that's nice too it just depends what you're doing uh, i like to keep koi fish whiskers quite short um sometimes even shorter than this just to give it that little bit more of what koi fish actually look like sort of thing and sometimes they'll be drawn with two whiskers so there'll be an, another little one here right next to our first one so that's another nice little detail that you can add in there to join the back part of the eye to where the whisker is we're pretty much just going to bring the face forward. So coming in from where we drew this curved line, you can do another little curve and just join it in. There's no magic to, to joining that forward, really. To do this portion at the back of the head here, we're going to bring a line from where it starts down a little bit and then curve back up to the other side. And at this point, it would probably be a good idea to just throw in those scales that are missing. like this and you can tell probably now that the top of the head is looking really flat and that's because we haven't drawn in the outer edge so to draw in the outer edge we're going to try and mimic roughly what we see on the top of this side of the head so we're going to come down with a bump there'll be another sort of bumpy area for the eye or where the eye sits the eye socket and then this part comes down pretty smoothly into the front of the head and that'll give the head a little bit more sort of shape and, and definition. Another thing you can do is coming from the back of the head here is put in a little uh, indication line there and another one coming down the other side and then we can actually change our center line a little bit. We're not changing the placement of it. We're just going to redraw it as a curved line to give the head more shape. So we're going to curve it up this way a little bit dip in the middle and then curve it back down and that gives the head a little bit more of a bulky sort of uh, rounded shape as opposed to a real flat across the top sort of shape now coming into our mouth area here we're going to bring sort of following this line here bring that down towards the front on both sides and then coming off that line you can do a couple of folds and then join into the edge of the mouth here. And then we're pretty much going to do a little wavy line that comes to the center line where it comes, sort of drops back in. And then from the center line, we're going to come back out, do the same shape on the other side. 
and sort of curve it back in, joining it up to that outside edge. All right. Now, I do realize this line is a little bit too high up, so I'm gonna race a little bit of that. And basically bulk that out a little bit, just so it's a bit rounder in shape. And to add a little bit of detail to the mouth, basically where that crease is, where the mouth folds a little bit, you can draw a couple of little lines in. And then I like to add this second lip to the top of the mouth. It's just like a little edge. And that's basically it. In terms of the sketch for our koi fish, we have a nice, uh, nicely composed koi fish. It's got a nice flow to it. The scales wrap around the body. Uh, all the fins are roughly in the right place for the most part, I think. And I think it's a really aesthetically pleasing design. It looks really nice. Now, since the beginning of my channel, I've been having requests on how to draw scales that wrap around the body of a koi or the body of a dragon. This is basically the way to do it. And I've also had requests on how to draw koi fish. And I'll do this as a series. So next time we can cover line work. And then next time we, you know, look at the koi fish again, we can cover shading and coloring. And if you guys want me to, I can go in a little bit on how to do flowers and background details with a koi fish as well. You'll have to let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see the next part of this video. And we'll see. I'll try and make it happen. Um, but anyways, that's phase one, the sketch. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that I was able to cover any of the questions and topics that you guys wanted to see. This week's viewer submission feature goes to Kunal Pahuja. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He did this incredible design. I'm actually very impressed by it. It's a really cool design, and I don't know, he said that he used one of my tutorial videos. To me, it doesn't look that way. It looks, you know, excellent in its own right. But that's the great thing about these tutorials is you don't have to draw exactly what I've drawn in the video, but just take elements from those videos and inject them into your art to make better art. Like that's what learning's about, you know, learning tools and techniques that you can use to better your art. If you'd like to see your artwork featured on my channel, head over to Facebook at Daggett Designs. This is where I keep my online portfolio and any upcoming work and features that I have. So if you head over there and flick me a direct message on Facebook with a piece of your artwork, um, you can ask me questions over there. I can try and give you some feedback. And most of all, it may get featured on one of my videos. Please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know what it is you'd like to see in the next video. Uh, whatever I'm able to teach you, I will show you. And if you leave a request down below, there's a good chance that I will use that in a future video. Most importantly, guys, please, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time a new video comes out. And that's it from me today, guys. So have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye.